Hey there. I thought that today we would do a video where I would just talk. And the reason I thought I'd do this video is that I was looking at my pens recently and I saw three pens that I realized I had all learned about at the DC Pen Super Show in 2017. Now, this is not about trip down memory lane, etc. But I thought these pens demonstrate a couple of things. So <clears throat> in DC that year, many years ago now, it's 2023 as I'm recording this, I saw three pens that I really liked. Armando Simoni Club of Bologna Extra, which was more or less released at that show. The birth of the Armando Simoni Club brand. Also the Lambrou Pens LB6. And then that was the first time for me that I saw the Conway Stewart Great Exhibition. Huge pen. Today's video is not about any of these pens in particular. I thought about doing a video like that, but I, I just don't know how interesting that is to people. I have reviewed all three of those pens and all three of them are in or will be in my personal pens video series, see an index on my website. What I, I thought what I would do today is talk more about some principles. The principle of a grail pen. A grail pen is a pen that you really like, that you really want, you may not be able to get straight away, might be very rare, might be very expensive, might be both of those things, might be, whatever. It's a pen that you would like to one day own. And those three pens for me were pens that I more or less immediately fell in love with. I obtained the Armando Simone Club pen first because it was sent to me for review. I liked it so much that I ended up purchasing it, that very pen. The LB6 took a couple years, but ended up getting that. And the Great Exhibition took the longest. It, it took me years to hunt that down. There are only 50 of those in the world. They're very expensive, uh, and you don't see them on the market a whole lot. Like I said, the point for me in this video is not to talk about those three pens in particular, but about the process of a Grail pen. The fun thing of a Grail pen is that it's something you can strive to obtain may take you weeks, months, years, decades to find that one particular pen, but one day you may find it. And you may also not find it, but let's assume one day you find it. Then it's very exciting. But to me, the concept of a grail pen has always been a difficult concept. When I want something, that I, I tend to kind of want that as soon as I can get it, because I want that pen. But sometimes you have to be patient. I, do think I'm a patient person. I think I've become a more patient person over the years. But what I'm trying to say is you need to have some patience for grail pens. And I think that is something that makes a grail pen so interesting. You find a pen, sometimes after years of looking, that you've been looking for for a long time. And that makes it very rewarding. But at the same time, the advantage of having a grail pen is that you have something to strive for, something to look for. A lot of people ask me for advice uh, about what to do because they're going to their first pen show. And one of the things I, I often try to advise is kind of have a feeling for what you're looking for. Because if you go to a pen show, even a small pen show, you're going to see hundreds of pens. If you go to a large pen show, you may not even see thousands, but tens of thousands of pens. If you go in blindly, you're going to be overwhelmed very quickly. It's a natural response, nothing you can do about it. So at that point, if you know, you know what, I would really like to try a Parker 51. Well, at any pen show you go to, you'll be able to find a Parker 51 in good condition. You'll be able to purchase that pen. But then you know what you are looking for. So with Grail pens, you know what to do for it. When I went to DC in 2017, I wasn't really looking for anything. I regret that. I saw these pens, I really like them, right? But they then gave me something for the next years to look for, not obsessively, not every day, but once in a while I would look at eBay, and at some point I found a great exhibition for a very fair price. And I ended up purchasing that, and I love that pen. So, that to me is the first part of this. A grail pen gives you something to strive for and make the fountain pen hobby interesting. To keep it interesting. Let, let's rephrase that, to keep it interesting. You have a couple of pens, but there's the one that you would really like to have. And an important follow-up to that is, what do you do if you find your grail pen? 
Because I remember years ago, I, I really wanted a, a tobacco Visconti Opera Master. And I, I couldn't find it. At some point, Aziza found it. Um, I ended up getting it. Great pen. I love it. But my concern at that point was, but now what? This is a pen I've been looking for for years. Quite, quite literally at that point, years. Now I have it. <clears throat> and the great answer came from Brian Anderson of Anderson Pens, who said, when well, you look for a new Grail pen. <laughs> that was actually a surprisingly good answer, right? It's very simple, but it's true. You can look for something else. So you also don't have to have the fear of, well, now I have obtained what I was after. Uh, now I fall into this void of I don't know what else. Well, then you will look for something else. I find myself now, after over a decade of using fountain pens, be very fortunate because a lot of companies have lent or sent me products to review. So over the years, I have used hundreds of fountain pens. Prices ranging from $5 to $50 to $500 to $5,000. So I've used a lot of pens. A reality for me now is I'm not really looking for anything. And whenever pen people ask me, what are you looking for? What's on your wish list? The answer is frankly, nothing. And that's not because I'm spoiled. It's just because I've used a lot of things I kind of know what I like, and there's simply nothing I'm looking for. I feel very satisfied. Sometimes I'm blown away by something. Here we have Scrivener EDC. Simple pen, not super expensive, a lot less expensive than the three pens I've just shown you. Got this, loved it. I love it, it's a great pen, very portable, pleasant writer, love it. Kept it in my personal collection. I wasn't actively looking for that. So sometimes you come across things. You go to a pen shop or a pen show, you go to a pen meet with pen clubs, etc. I'm trying to put the word pen in that sentence as many times as I can. Um, and then you'll see something. You think, oh, I didn't know that existed. That's really cool. I may want to pursue that. That happened uh, to me with the Delta Roma Imperiale. And I have a demonstrated version of I saw that for the first time at a, at a pen meet, local pen club, and I pursued that pen. So, I think all of this is great. A grail pen, it gives you something to look for, it gives you something to strive for, it gives you something to occupy your mind to kind of scour the market for, whether that is eBay or pen shops or whatever. It also keeps the hobby interesting. And once you've achieved that goal, you can move on to another grail pen. The only thing I would say is, don't lose track of the enjoyment of what you already own. I sometimes feel that we can get a little obsessed in hunting down specific things and you get this feeling of I will not be happy until I have pen X. And you get pen X and you're happy for a week and then after that, that just deteriorates. It's normal as well. It's how our brain works. You've got something novel, you like it, but then that excitement subsides. Very normal. But the downside to that is we can become a little obsessed. And we can fall into the trap of thinking that once we have X, we're going to be happy. And then you have X and then it turns out you're not that much happier. So what I would say is, if you're thinking about grail pens, don't become obsessive. This sounds like a fairly straightforward thing to say, but, but it's, it's, it's a nuanced statement. Try not to get obsessive. You may have other pens. There are other pens in the market that may not be that one grail pen, but you can get other pens. Maybe a different finish or model, sorry, a different finish of the model you're looking for. Maybe an entirely different model from the same brand, maybe a completely different brand. There are other things to explore. That exploration is also a lot of fun. So, these are some of the immediate thoughts I had about this, the, the concept of a grail pen, because I do get a lot of questions about that. I don't think I have one grail pen. I certainly have pens that I like a lot. They're pens that I have looked for for quite a long time, that I've been fortunate to find. But not everyone does. So, there you have it. Hope this was useful. Let me know your thoughts about grail pens, and while we're at it, maybe what your grail pen is. I always like to read that. That's all I have. Hope this was useful, and um, I'm glad to see you later. Bye.